Yeah, I touch about that phenomenon in my book, The Warrior's Way and the Soldier's Soul. And mm-hmm. a lot of guys in Iraq that I served with, including myself, you know, we'd roll every time you roll out on a convoy or a combat op, you don't know if you're going to get uh, zeroed out by a roadside bomb, snipers, rockets, what have you. And after enough time, after you do enough times, you just realize, hey, I'm already fucking dead. I started the, like the very dark macabre videos in the beginning. I'd say, you think? Yeah. <laughs> just, a little, just a twinge, yeah, yeah. maybe, huh? I did those under Second Class city, Citizen. <laughs> second Class Idiot. <laughs> yeah, no, Second Class Citizen. And after about 18 months, I just could not keep my head in that negative cloud. I, I needed to change it up. So I did the guerrilla warfare thing, and I'm like, you know what? We could attack it from a whole other angle and use comedy. So that's why I did it. Yeah. And another thing is, like, I used the comedy to smooth over a bunch of the attitudes that people have against each other and all the infighting. Because mm-hmm. I just crack some jokes and move right on through it. Just well, you could on. you could probably speak to this as well, Emmett. <laughs> I was listening to a documentary and they, they got these old timers from the American eighth uh, air force or air Corps Cause it wasn't an air force back in world war two. And these guys are like, okay, so your death rates are super high. And they would go through this process where <clears throat> they would constantly worry about dining as you logically would. But then they got to this point where it's like, I can't live like this anymore. And they kind of like go uh, yeah. simply because you can't torture your mind that way. And it, inevitably every guy, whether it's a, a you know, PTSD or you're in a, an emergency or crisis or going through a divorce or whatever else. And then I think guys come to this like equilibrium where it's like, fuck it, don't care, zero fucks to give. And then it's like you either make it or break it and, and then move on off after that. Yeah, I touch about that phenomenon in my book, The Warrior's Way and the Soldier's Soul. And mm-hmm. a lot of guys in Iraq that I served with, including myself, you know, we'd roll every time you roll out on a convoy or a combat op, you don't know if you're going to get uh, zeroed out by roadside bombs, snipers, rockets, what have you. And after enough time, after you do enough times, you just realize, hey, I'm already fucking dead. It's not a big deal. No big deal. But, but the hard thing is, is if you live through it and you come back, it's next to impossible to reawaken your dead self. It, it's really me- hard to come back from that, man. I, I got a question. I, I don't think we could ever adapt to it. I, I, and I, I did not serve. I'm nowhere near you. But uh, after you go through enough shit, generally speaking, whether it's war or dating or whatever else, like, I, you know what I want? I want to be like my four year old self hanging out with my grandpa, where there was like this complete blank slate of innocence and wonderment and happiness. And after you go through enough of fucking life, you can never return to that. You can. And there's just no way. Like, um, before I went to Iraq, I absolutely loved video games and played video games all the time. I came back, and I literally didn't touch the Xbox for years. I'm just now trying to get back into it. I, but I, I, it's hard for me to reawaken that, that, that dead love I once had for it. War Thunder is what you're playing now, right? Yeah, I play War Thunder maybe two to four times a month. But only for like two or four hours at a time. Hey, you know, maybe we'll uh, we'll just say screw it and start doing some streams while we're playing old video games. You yeah, know, and just shoot the shit. Be, <laughs> Is that a, like a, a fighter plane game, or what? What's the name? What's the genre? War Thunder is uh, it's a tank combat game, mm. and the, you have airplanes in there too. I don't really do a lot of the airplane stuff. It's for fags. I, I just drive around. <laughs> Totally. I just drive and shoot people in tanks. We're gonna man. get banned. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> We're gonna get banned. Listen, I know those Air Force guys, those pussies. They have the best chow halls. They have the best facilities. They get the cool airplanes. They ride it. They, they, they have like everyone's issued an SUV per two dudes. It's it's just disgusting. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. I mean, even their their fight song. It's, yeah, it sounds more like it's a weak. Eh, eh. It's weak. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I mean, in the army, I mean, there were times I I had to eat my food out of my hat, and I didn't even have a spoon. <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, we have chow, but we don't have plates. Oh, and we don't have any silverware. Hey, you know, you... just fucking put it in my hat, motherfucker. <laughs> 
Watch yourself some Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern and uh, leave the butt hurt at home, okay?